In Dota 2, everybody wants to climb their MMR, everyone wants to increase their rank, and everyone wants to improve. So here's five tips to help you do that. Now, of course, I am just returning to the game, so I'm also learning too, but these are things that worked in the past, work today, and will always work in the future. And as the channel name states, this is Dota Casual, so this is more for the casual player, more for the average skilled player, than the people who are like top tier MMR, of course, because you're probably better than me, and I'm happy to accept that. But for you guys that are here with that sort of MMR, please drop some more tips in the comments to help us noobs out as well, and I would very much appreciate it anyway hope you enjoy the video if you do please do subscribe to the channel there'll be more stuff like this coming soon and well if you do subscribe it helps me out a hell of a lot i'm making more content and also i'm playing the numbers go up game so anyway <laughs> let's get started tip number one is one i can't really do myself because i'm just too freaking good no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> if you get smashed in lane, like absolutely destroyed in lane, come into your thing, download the replay, and watch the replay. Now, this is an example where I actually did okay, uh, but either way, if you're playing mid lane, we're going to just look at our mid laner in this. Um, come into the game, and then if you got destroyed, just accept that you got destroyed. You lost that lane. It happens. You're not always going to win. There's always going to be someone that is better than you. That is just how it is. Unless you're like the top of mind in the world, in which case, hey, good for you. But... Come into the game and watch your replays and just do both two things. Watch your perspective first and then look for things that you could have done better. And then look at the other player's perspective by coming here and going to play of you and looking at theirs and seeing what they did to actually make you lose the lane. Because I guarantee you there's a reason that they outplayed you. You just need to be able to accept that you're not always going to win because it can help you out a hell of a lot and be able to look at that and just thinking, right, they did this. I probably could have done this better. Next time I should apply this. Uh, I could have done better at rune control. I could have done better at this and this and this. And eventually you'll start applying these things to it and you'll start climbing an MMR because you'll win your lanes. Winning your lane doesn't necessarily immediately win the get entire game, but it definitely puts you in a better position to go out there and be a lot better than you would be if you lost your lane. So this is definitely something that I do quite a lot. If I get absolutely destroyed, like outplayed huge, I will always watch the replay. It helps out loads. Next up, I would suggest playing at least one normal game before you play a ranked game for that day. If you've just opened up Dota 2 for that day, you haven't played at all yet, just play one normal game like just regular game this is just a warm-up game this is just something to check if you are in the in, in a good place or not now what i mean by this is have you ever played a game where you start it up you're all good everything's perfectly fine and for some reason you're playing your favorite hero you're the one you've played way more than anything but you're missing all the last hits you are missing all of your spells say if you're playing a pudge you're missing all of the hooks you're missing all your sun strikes and invoker you are just not able to focus as much and you don't understand what's going on guess what people just have days this happens in almost every game i've played not just like dota 2 but like if i play a different game um mmos or something like that you met you just mess things up it feels like your hands aren't working right it's just you just can't focus exactly the same you could be a little bit more tired than usual you don't notice uh, any of these things can apply so play a normal game first, then you can judge that and you can go, yep, yeah, this is all good. I'm focused. I can, I played well. Uh, I'm not tired. I'm not stressed out. Like everything's fine. I'm in a good place to play a ranked game. Let's go and do it. And then you can get into the ranked game and you can go for it. And it's absolutely great. This is what you want to do. If you have a bad game in that first game, but it's not because of any of these reasons above, it's just because it was a bad game, you got outpicked, just look at the fact that, did you get your last hits? Did you hit the timings that you needed to hit? Did you do what you should have done to actually make that game as good as it could have been. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. But if you just answer yes to those questions, then queue up for ranked and best of luck. The next thing to talk about is going to be smurfs. Now, smurfs do happen in games, and this is a thing that stresses a lot of people out and puts people off, and it, you can get really caught up on it, and it can ruin your whole mood and everything. But try your best not to get put off by smurfs way too much or caught up on the idea of it more than you should. A lot of people get held back in ranked a lot because everything that if they lose a game or if they uh, have a bad game or they get stumped, it's all down to, well, I can't improve because there's smurfs. Now, smurfs do exist, and I'm not denying this smurfs are a pain they do just cause stress and they are annoying they're the people that are like making loads of vault accounts to climb the mmr or they're boosting other people's accounts it's frustrating it's annoying but there's not really much you can do about it that being said i can guarantee you if you belong in a higher rank you will get to that rank eventually also keep in mind that if there is smurfs in every game then there's a good chance that in the next game that smurf is on your team it is completely random who you queue with, so it's a 50-50 chance they're on your team or they're not. Now, it may feel like some people are going to be sat here, and I'm not discounting this whatsoever, but you may be thinking, 
uh, the Smurfs always on the enemy team though. They're never on my team. They're always on the enemy team. I can remember this time and this time and this time that they were on the enemy team and it was stressful and it was just pointless and a waste of time. Well, guess what? Everybody else feels the same way. And the reason being is it's not because you are just like in denial or anything like that. It's because of the way the brain works. You are going to remember the bad times a lot more than the good times. But I guarantee you, there's probably been just as many times that a Smurf has carried you to victory and you've not really had to do anything in comparison to when there's been a Smurf on the enemy team that has absolutely kicked your ass. But I promise you this, if you belong in a higher rank, you will climb to that higher rank at some point. Eventually, you're going to hit a wall where you just sit and float around. That's probably your current rank. You can still improve, you can still learn more, and you can still get past that, but it's going to slow down dramatically. But the reason these Smurfs can make new accounts and then climb the rank really, really quickly is because they belong in a higher rank. If you do too, you will also climb. So don't get caught up on Smurfs. You will get them. They are freaking annoying, but you can deal with it in this way. Okay, next up, we're going to talk about something very different and not really need to be in the gameplay. So let's close this off. The next thing is pick the heroes that are currently strong and currently in meta. Now, how can you do this? You come into here and when you're on your homepage, go to the heroes section. In the heroes section, you can go to trends. Now, if you don't have Dota Plus, don't panic. You can just use Dota Buff from the internet. It works too. Um, but come here and then you've got all of your ranked medals in here. I mentioned this in a recent video. I will link the whole thing below if you want to have more information. But you can look at your rank here and you can see which heroes are good. Now, as you can see, the win rate from Razor went from 47.6% up to 57% in the Archon bracket. If you're an Archon player, Razor's stupidly strong, Lycan's stupidly strong, Meepo's stupidly strong. So these are the heroes you should be looking at because there's not just because people are really good with this hero in this bracket, it's because this hero offers a lot of stuff right now. So if you're picking people that are way down the list that have like a stupidly low win rate and you're playing those and refusing to like play the heroes that are strong, you're going to have a negative win rate, not because you're bad, but because that hero just isn't strong in the meta right now. So head to this little tab or look at Dota Buff Online and find out which heroes in your rank have a good win rate and play them. The reason you play them is because you want to win. If you want to win, then play the strong heroes. And that's just how Dota 2 works. You don't see people in the actual pro scene picking really weak heroes. You see them picking the heroes that are strong in the current meta. So do the same. Okay, so finally, we are just in a bot match here, but the example is all the same, just as strong. If you are picking later in the game, you haven't picked first, you're not first picking or second picking, obviously, uh, pick what your team actually needs and consider this properly. Don't just think, hey, I'm going to play a game and I'm going to play Pudge. No matter what happens, I'm going to play Pudge. I don't care if they pick 20 counters to me, I'm flicking Pudge. If you want to do that, you do that, but maybe do it in normal. And if you want to climb MMR, then just wait and see. If your last pick, if your second to last pick, anything like that, look at what your team needs, look at what other people are showing up here. Because if they're showing something else, then you can be like, okay, this person doesn't have a stun. This person does have a stun. I need, we need this. We are, we're all physical damage, so maybe we need some magic damage. And pick what your team actually needs. Look at the enemy team as well. Do they have heroes that are really hard to kill? Do you need lockdown? Do they have a juggernaut? Maybe you should get a silence that's really easy to apply. All this sort of stuff is things that you should think about and pick those heroes accordingly. Of course, it's a good idea to have a good set of heroes that you plan on playing, but then pick the best hero out of that pool that you're good with to actually apply to that game that you're in at the moment. Don't just pick something like if they pick like all these heroes that are a counter to Invoker, just because I'm an Invoker spammer, I'm not going to pick Invoker. If they pick every counter, no chance. It's not happening. If they've got Earthshaker and Magnus and all the freaking AoE in the world, I'm not going to pick Meepo because frick that. It's not going to happen. So in that case, pick what hero fits into the game. You give yourself a better chance. Look at what your team needs. Look at what the enemy needs. And um how many of you guys has been stressed out by this minus two this whole time? It's been stressing me out, but whew, minus two, minus two. Man, I'm going to have no money. It's a good job this is a bot game. And there we go. Five nice and easy things that everybody can do to improve in MMR. Now, listen, the first one about watching replays. A lot of you guys won't do this. A lot of you guys won't turn this onto, onto board and stuff. Now, I get it. It's a pain. It's frustrating. It takes time. You just want to play another game. Trust me, watching your replays back where you get stomped will help out a lot. So definitely give that one a look. Uh, I promise you'll improve from it. Now, I know I'm not a pro, so anyone who does have other tips, please do drop them in the comments down below and I will take those and I will apply them and I will use them and I will also share them with others too. But like I said, Dota 2 Casuals, we are looking at the average player here. So that's the audience of this video. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did like it, if you did find it useful, please do subscribe to the channel. You genuinely will be helping me out an absolute ton. It is very much appreciated while we grow the channel and make more content. Other than 
than that, thank you all for spending your time on my video, and I'll see you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.